Next up, we have Dan Blashend from, he's the founder and CEO of Sulon Technologies. So, uh, hi everybody. Um, my name is Dan. I do have a longer version of my name. Uh, Danushin Balachin Grace Warren. Uh, for those who missed my uh, presentation yesterday, uh, it's pretty much the same slides. I'll change the story around just a little bit to fit the, the cause of the, um, uh, the, uh, the session right now. Uh, basically, um, have you guys heard of Sulon Technologies? Have any of you tried it out at, uh, at Napa? Yeah, okay. All right, so uh, we're actually demoing that, uh, the Sulon Cortex system at Napa One, which is in the hotel. Just, just gotta go past the lobby a little bit. Um, so for those who want to experience what I'm about to tell you, take you through today. Um, so I'll, I'll share with you a little bit of my background, um, what happened to me and how I came up with this idea, and then I'll talk about the idea. Uh, three years ago, I was at a post-bachelor party, and we decided to have a gaming marathon, and we're playing Resident Evil. So it's a post-bachelor party, and we're playing video games. 14-hour marathon, Resident Evil. Um, after, playing, yeah, after playing, I fell asleep, crashed, and I had a nightmare. Uh, the nightmare started off really nice. I was chasing Claire. I think you guys know that girl in Resident Evil. She's super hot. So I was following, <laughs> I was following behind her. All of a sudden, she got up and left and started running. And this happens in real life with me all the time with females, but not in my dreams. So I turn around, it's a mass you know, swarm of zombies just like chasing me. I start running, and I take out my two 9 millimeters, and I'm like blasting away. I run out of bullets. And I'm like, oh, she crud. Um, and actually, I swore in my dream. And they got me from behind, they got me from the front, and they just started biting me, and they started chewing me, and I fell down. And I said, no, I saw my organs, my guts, everything just thrown everywhere. My leg was somewhere else. I don't even know how I got there. But you know, people munching on it. And I woke up panting. Um, and my, my buddies, they're still playing. They're like, they're like right here, like, Dan, you all right? <laughs> right? And, uh, and I told them about my dream. And now this is a little cliche because any of you gamers out there, uh, the hardcore guys, they always dream about their game because they play it so long. But that's the day when I decided to do something about it. How we can actually live a movie moment, a gaming moment, um, pretty much start living holodeck-like experiences. A year and a half later, of exploration and heavy R&D and research into different organizations and what other people are trying to do to actually experience holodeck-like experiences, uh, I found out a little bit of a flaw in the way they were approaching it, at least when it comes to how to get it to market or how to expand the technology fast enough. I'm a strong believer that any technology for it to succeed at a rate that is a mass consumable and it becomes a need, a necessity, and thus is being developed and becomes something that is uh, like, like a t-shirt you're wearing. It needs to be in mass hands. So all of these um, research organizations that are exploring it, even location-based centers, they have approached it from exactly trying to replicate what the holodeck studio was, the Star Trek holodeck. A location-based center that is calibrated specifically for that particular session, uh, fixed room, projectors, multi-million dollar installations. And I'm like, how am I gonna get this to consumers' hands? That's a $20 million uh, crystal digital holodeck studio in London, right? Oh, I think it's in London. Um, and then you got the military uh, systems are like hundreds of millions of dollars. And there was, uh, there was also, they've been exploring this for the last 20 years. Like ever since VR was made, they, they've been absorbing that into training and simulations, industrial applications. And there was a, I felt like, why has it taken it 20 years and still it's not into mainstream? It's such an awesome tech to have. And I felt that, and I looked back at how current trends were at different markets, at different consumer electronics. You got the phone, which like in 10 years just became a mainstream. You got the Android OS, which in like two years became viral. These are all technologies that became uh, available to everybody's hands. A lot of developers, a lot of consumers, and they were, they were helping grow the technology at an exponential rate. So how do I make a holodeck-like experience at a consumer level? And that's where the question started uh, a year and a half later. I figured out a way to actually experience a, the closest thing to a holodeck-like experience. Without going to a, fix, without going to a fixed location-based center, I can dynamically change any physical environment indoor or outdoors into an augmented virtual reality experience, where I can have zombies chase you through your own uh, basement. But when they walk on your basement on the floor, and you got a carpeted floor, the, the, the feet will recess the carpet. I can manipulate the environment at the AR level and totally change it completely to put yourself in the fully VR immersive environment. Unlike other VR headsets, you can move around, you can jump, you can crawl, you can run, you can crouch. Do what you gotta do normally. You're not tethered. Yes, it sounds all crazy, right? So let me just take you through a basic AR gameplay, okay?
the system deploys not just cameras, but a wide variety of sensors. It's, there's a sensor fusion that happens, and it detects the environment in a span of 300 feet, in a span of 10 milliseconds, right down to 10 millimeter accuracy, and it reconstructs that and applies virtual objects or just changes the environment completely to mess up with your, your physical environment, to give you this next level of gaming experience. Of course, what we ended up trying to solve, my, my goal was trying to get the holodeck-like experience. I ended up solving a little bit beyond the holodeck experience, in my opinion. Maybe we haven't solved the touch, sense, and smell yet. But, but what it is is actually a new type of uh, entertainment experience. Spatial entertainment is what I'm coning as what this technology is, is bringing to the consumers, allowing you to literally manipulate from the AR to VR world and not go to a location-based center for under $500. It takes your mobile device and transforms any physical environment that you're in, indoors, outdoors, regardless of the number of floors, into a spatial entertainment um, experience. That's spatial movies, spatial gaming, spatial training, spatial simulations, anything you want to create and experience in a whole totally different way, you cannot do with the Cortex. Um, this is a, in a, a rough ID or industrial design of what's going to be shipping out Q4 this year. There's three parts of the system. There's a spatial scanner, which is at the top, a little knob looking like thing. Spatial processing unit, which sits at the back over here, and you got the front visor. Of course, the front visor is quite similar to the way current VR headsets are made, except it also has the augmented reality uh, support as well. With high field of view, about 140 degrees, um, field, of, field of view, a fully immersive kind of experience, as well as the, the spatial scanners communicating back to the spatial processing unit, which does all the number crunching and computes it, uh, and then sends the data via Bluetooth to your mobile device, which gets rendered and displayed as their screen. Okay. And this was our goal towards trying to get the holodeck experience to the consumer as quickly as possible. That's nerve wracking. <laughs> um, and um, let me take you through our early prototypes. We have prototype number two, which is currently running at Napa Eye, so you can experience it for yourself. And these are some, this is prototype number one in action, just a very quick demonstration of actually people actually experiencing their AR and VR moments. Oops, see. Okay, and. I just got rendering issues on my video frame, but you get the gist of it. You can actually try it out, so to get the video, just go there and try it out. Um, and, uh, oopsie, okay. So basically, yes, uh, you, you can pre order the unit right now. Um, we're shipping out later this year. And uh, it's a platform, so it's not just for gaming. It, you can dump all kinds of different applications, virtual showrooms. You can say if you're going to buy a Mercedes SLK, I, I, I say this metaphor quite often, you can have that car materialize right on your driveway in, in scale. You can move around, you can crouch, you can look at it, you can open the doors, get inside, look at everything, and you can actually change the color of the car live, the seats, the material. You can upgrade it on the fly. And it's because the system is contextually aware of its surroundings, the floor, the 3D space. And it does that scan in three milliseconds. Okay? And uh, so experience it at uh, Napa One. And thank you. And you guess how many Q&A? Thank you. So how is it on portability and seeing the image there, is that all connected or can it be disconnected if I to travel with it easily or how does that? So it's going to ship on like a headset. So basically it has the, the back part and the front part are separate units. You can smash, you know, not smash them, but you can, you can compress them together, pack it up and send it put in your backpack. Oh, okay. Do you provide an SDK and does yeah. it integrate with the Unity engine? Yeah, so it supports Unity, engines? Unreal. And especially the artist tools, 2DX Max, Maya, and we're, and we're ongoing support, uh, supporting as many different engines as we can to help start getting content out there. Uh, yeah, I have a question um, regarding, I mean, what, what you're doing is instead of having see-through, you're just reprojecting everything and, and transforming the world. What is an acceptable delay for, uh, that people find acceptable uh, so that they don't feel seasick or they don't feel dazzled or stuff like that? Because uh, when 
when you're moving around and when you're turning your head, you, you want to have as little delay as possible. Do, have you, do you know how much it is? Because you're, say, you're saying 300 question. milliseconds. That's a great question, and it's experience-driven. So it depends on the particular application you're trying to develop. Of course, if you're playing gaming, you want to get it up at least 30 FPS. That means when it comes to measuring the environment, to figuring your position, to rendering of the frame itself, that, that will add to the delay. Or, yeah, so, and the latency and the lag. And what you want to do is get that frame rate up and that make sure the update rates and the user experiences is there. And it's, I think you're talking about from, if I was to move my hand here and that delay between this and this. Yeah, so that has to be all improved. It all has to fit be within that frame rate. So basically, your normal eye um, perception and how you measure motion. You know, before 30 FPS, we thought, oh man, that was, some, that was really crazy performance. But now 30 FPS has become desensitized. So now we're all looking at 60 FPS. Because the human body keeps measuring the next the delta change, not, not really the absolute change. So it, it is application specific. And as you mature in that application, you're, you know. Uh, hi, uh, I did try the demo downstairs and it was very compelling. I, I recommend everyone try it, it was very, very, very good. Um, two, two questions, the first is, uh, as I was doing the demo, there was a kind of little alarm that alerted me that I was walking to the confines of the space. Are you looking at uh, any redirection techniques or is that part of the, uh, SDK. And then the second question is just a factual question. So um, the demo that you're showing downstairs, I, I don't believe that is a 140 degree field of view. Is that something that no, you will, yeah. That's about 120 degrees. Uh, the camera and uh, the VR lenses are not matched. So there's a disparity. Uh, that will be solved in the, in the upcoming weeks. Regarding your question regarding redirected, uh, you, you just have to wait and see um, for that. Yeah, definitely. I got your card, man. Yeah. So we have time for one or two more questions. Um, does it have a battery, or you have to stay connected? So. No, it has a giant solar panel. No, I'm just kidding. It has a, it has a battery. <laughs> um, it's it's battery operated. Um, it lasts for about four or five hours. Oh, okay. And extends your mobile device too. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, it costs about five dollars per session. By the way, no, I'm just kidding too. It's free. <laughs> Yeah, just, I saw a raise capital, right? Just like go to shows and just like charge them. Last final question for Dan. Yeah. Uh, multiplayer? Yeah, multiplayer will be supported soon. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, guys.